Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is how to use AI to enhance and develop multiple, the same image multiple times. What we're going to do is, since we don't have a way of creating a virtual copy inside Luminar, I'm going to show you a quick way where we can copy the original RAW file, then use that to manipulate AI, do whatever we want to do, make changes to it, and then export it out to um, a, a file, and then do the same thing again for a second version or a third version. It, it just, it's a great way for you to start working with your creativity without ruining something you really, really like. All right, so let's dive right in. Hello, everyone. It's great to see you. Thanks for joining in. All right, so here we are with um, a photo shoot I did with Rainy Flowers. Now, here's a decision you can make. You can either create um, a project space catalog, which I just did here. In other words, notice the only images in this catalog are the flowers. So this is a project base catalog. Or you just add it to the regular catalog you already have. I just chose to do a project base. So these are the only images in here. Now, here's the file itself for the original. Let me do the original. So here, here's the actual um, flower we're going to manipulate today. Now, I already went through, created it, edited it. I love what I have. From here, I created, let me show before and after. I did create a, a template based on this so I could duplicate this over and over again on the same flower set. So here's before, here's after, all right? So I like what I have, and like I said, I already have a template that I've created for it. So to reproduce this over again is a matter of just clicking on that template. What I'm gonna do is this. I wanna try a couple different cropping um, techniques to it. So I could either use this and start manipulating the, the cropping, or I could create a duplicate, all right? For now, let's create a duplicate. So I'm gonna right click, show in Explorer, and once my Explorer or Finder comes up, here it is, I'm gonna right click on it. So now that's the original image. Now if, you, if I expand it, you'll notice there's no raw, there's no edits made to that particular image because it's still a raw file. So I want to I want to copy it. And now I'm in the same folder, control or command P. I want to paste or V rather. V, I want to paste that raw file back into the same folder I've been working on. And notice it gave it um, a new file name. It just called it copy. Now I can do this again for a third one, a fourth one, so on. So now that we did this, so I copied that file into um, our directory or folder. Now when I come back here to the catalog, we'll have to give it a second. And if you look down here, here's 750, that's the raw file. And there's the copy one. So you see how it brought it right back in to Luminar for me. So I don't have to go hunting for it. Now notice it brought it back. There's no changes to, there's no edits made to this because it's a raw file. The original one was edited. So what I'm gonna do is come to templates and I'll apply the exact same, um, the exact same template I applied to one I showed you earlier. I'll apply to this one. Now that we have it set, I can, I can start experimenting and using uh, some of the AI tools to enhance it further. So right now we have two copies, not a virtual copy. I have two hard copies. One or both of them are on my hard drive. One is labeled the original file name. The other one copy is added to it. All right, so I like this image, however, I want to see what it would look like if I cropped the daylights out of it. 
So I'm going to come in here, apply a generous crop. Oh, I like it. I'm going to back off a little bit. All right. So I took the original, and I wanted to see what it would look like if we cropped it in tighter. So let's see what happens. It's, it's thinking. It's going to process it for me. And the next step I want to do is, which I didn't do on my original, I want to manipulate this as if I shot it with a, um, a wide-angle lens. So I like how this looks. I like the crop. Let's come down here to the professional tools. And let's see what would happen if we apply some distortion to it. I'm going to go to an extreme. So I applied 100% to it. And give it a second to refresh. Here we go. All right. And now I'm going to come back up again. Oh, good. So before, well, it's still, thinking, it's still processing one moment. And as soon as it's done, there we go. So ready? Before, after. Now, I just said, just like, like you said, I just added that little extra wide angle look to it just to, just to make it look a little fuller. That's something I wanted. So I have it here. I like where it's at. And by the way, if you noticed, I'm going to zoom in to about 200%. This was shot at 3200 ISO. Here's before, look at this, after. The reason um, why I was able to get rid of that noise is in two forms. I used the, deno the denoise tool right here, and I brought that to 100%. But what I also did was I came to structure, and I applied a negative value to tr structure. And what that did was it helped blur that just a touch more. So that's just a side tip. Now, here's the original. So I'm going to go back to my catalog. And what I'm going to do is this. Here's the copy of it. So I don't get confused. I created an album. And the album, I, I labeled it as Favorite Photos. So I'm going to drag and drop this right into my Favorite Photos or Flowers. And now I have the original one that, that we were working on. And now I have the one I just edited. So a folder is virtual, meaning I can put as many images inside that folder as I want, and it's not going to increase the size of your hard drive because you're not copying images. You're pointing to where those images are located on your computer. All right? So in doing that, albums are a great way to organize um, your images. So instead of having to sift through, what, 33 images in this folder, I can just drag and drop those two into this folder and then decide which one do I like better. So do you see what I'm getting? If, if I did this crop to this particular image, which I could have, and then applied the lens distortion to it, if I realized it's not what I liked, I'd have to go back to history, erase the stuff that we've done, and go back to this spot here. But by creating a virtual copy, or excuse me, by creating another copy of this, not a virtual one, but another hard copy of my image, now I'm able to duplicate what I did and make changes. From here, I can actually create a third change, or if I, I like how this looks, but I do want this to be a little softer. So let's see, we can come over here to the creative tools. And as soon as it comes in, and I'm gonna add a little softness to it. So the point I'm trying to get at is we don't have virtual copies inside uh, Luminar AI. That's not gonna, that doesn't have to stop us from still experimenting by creating or bringing in these um, images or duplicating it. Another option, here we are, let me get to the 
the glow. The glow's under creative. And I want to do a soft, let's say a glow, and drag it out just a bit. Here. Um, another option, what we could have done, is export this as a TIFF or a JPEG. Because I already like what, it's, what I already have. I like it. Once I exported it, then I can continue to complete, uh, to do more, more changes on it. So here we are. I added that little glow effect to it. Before, after, and then there's the glow effect. Great. Now let's come back here. So here is the original or the base that we started with. Not the original image, but the base that I really, really like. So the, the other option we talked about is I'm going to export this and I'm going to put this as uh, version 1. So now that I know that that's been edited, it's version 1, I can save it as a JPEG or let's save it as a TIFF. We'll have more options. And I'm going to put it at full res. Browse. And I want to save it back to that same folder flowers and I actually have a folder called complete but this is this right here is the folder we were working on so I'm going to create another folder inside here a subfolder and I'm going to call that complete this way when we save this image it's going to put it back in the same folder the original is in but in a subfolder underneath it export all right, let's give that a couple seconds to export. So, in the chat, there, let me grab the chat here. Um, good, okay, so Wolfgang, why is it useful to have multiple original rather than multiple copies of the edit of the original? So, th that's what we're working on right now. I'm showing you two different options. One is I created the copy of the original. So, I created or the the... the the copy itself of the original image, of the original image, the raw file, and just brought it in. Now it's completely blank. So if I didn't want to apply that template to it, I didn't. I can start from scratch. I can start from the template. I have a clean image I can start from. So that was option one: copy the raw file into the same folder. Option two, which some of you are awesome, which you're bringing out is make multiple copies of the original uh, of the the finished file, which I like, and then go from there. Perfect. I love the way you guys are thinking. So, yes, we could, you know, take multiple of the original file before I even start working with Luminar. You can do that, too. That's entirely up to you. That's your workflow. You decide um, what's best for you. So, in a case that I just showed you here is for me, I just came in, brought it in, and bought that, brought, brought that in and did my, my changes to it. Um, yes. No, TIFFs are not going to be... Well, that's a good question. Let me pull it up here. He's asking, aren't TIFFs generally larger than raw files? Well, let's check. So, I'm going to come over to Catalog. Here we are. And... Notice it brought in that sub subfolder, which is now that TIFF. All right. Um, let's look right in here. So this is 148 megs. That's a TIFF file. And for the same raw file that we were working on, it's 54 megs. So here we are, 54 meg. Versus 148 meg. So yes, if I made it into a JPEG, obviously it would be smaller, but we want the highest quality. So um, you brought out a very, very good point there where he's saying, you know, TIFFs are generally larger than a RAW file. So he just made a perfect case on where you would just keep copying, um, just like 78 Degrees said, just copy all your RAW files. Maybe you make five copies if you know it. Bring, bring, the, bring the files in and take care of it from there. And yes, um, the, other, the other benefit of the TIFF versus uh, RAW, RAW will have more 
data to work with than the TIFF. Um, so the TIFF is the process file. But if you already know, which we have right here, you already know, hey, I like this image a lot. I just want to start adding different effects to it from this starting point, then export it and go from there. Um, I'm trying to think of a good, ex oh, perfect example. Since I do a lot of sport portraits, in an example like this, sometimes a client wants a five by seven, sometimes they want an eight by 10, sometimes a 16 by 20. Well, the problem with a five by seven and an eight by 10 is the aspect ratios are different. So in this case here, what you could do is what we just did, copy the, the finished product, let's say the finished stiff, and then crop it down to the proper size and then send it off to printing. So that's one way of looking at it. Another way is, again, you're just bombing through your edits. You're, you're getting creative. You're like, you know what? How would this look if I just added, you know, a different crop to it or um, a different template or even converting it, you know, to black and white? Then you decide, do I want to go the TIFF route or do I want to go the, the raw file uh, uh, part? That's entirely up to you. So the whole concept behind this is I'm trying to give examples. So when, when you're in a creative mood and you're not quite sure, here we go, and you're not quite sure where you want to head with an edit, make a duplicate of it, change it to your heart's content, export it, do whatever you want. And if you decide it's not what you want, then just delete it um, from inside Luminar, which will delete it on your disk. All right? Awesome. Okay, let me pull up here. Good, Rob. Or you could try different LUTs um, and you can't make the decision. Perfect. Good, guys. So I love how you guys are thinking um, to where, and, and the um, one, one, one feature I desperately wish we would have is that virtual copy. So I put that in as a request. Feel free to, to put that in as a request also, just message support, hey, it'd be really cool if we had virtual copies. And, and, and one of the reasons I know why the engineers hesitate from the virtual copies is some people will start to get confused on what's a virtual copy versus the original, and then they delete the original, not realizing they're gonna delete the virtual copies. So I, I totally understand where they're coming from because they want to make this very, very intuitive and less confusing, especially for the new photographer. So, but that that's a perfect, perfect um, thing for the advance for for the advance editors or or retouchers. That that having that extra copy that we can experiment with just makes all the difference. All right, great guys. Hey, thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you at the next coffee break.